Good evening everyone, welcome, thank you for joining me. I uh, hope you're all staying safe in these difficult circumstances. I'm sorry I can't be at the studios, I do miss being there and missing everybody's company. Um, but I hope you um, are enjoying the one day special. I hope you love the designs as much as I did creating them and designing them. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Tracy Evans. I'm part of the All and Create um, product design team. And today we've got three stamps in the one day special. Just cleaning my desk so you can actually see. We've got three stamps in the one day special. We've got the Frittle Area which has some wonderful background elements. I love background elements. I just think that these background pieces, you can use them on their own or with the stamp as a whole. And I love frittle areas in the garden at spring. Most of my stamps are inspired by the garden um, and frittle areas in spring are fantastic. So I'm absolutely thrilled to have one as a stamp design. And my second stamp, another border stamp, is the passion flower. My lovely friend, Jo, asked if I'd design a passion flower and as you all know I like to do my stamps in a doodly kind of fashion and this is a passion flower with a quirky touch and I'm really pleased with the way that came out and you could use that stamp just part of it not necessarily you don't have to use the whole thing and then when I'm designing stamps I always think it's important to have a background element so we've got a lovely background stamp here overlapping texture and it's got wonderful textures in there text background elements. I just love the background designs because they just add so much to the other stamps and you can use them on their own or combine them with all the other stamps. So those are the three stamps that we've got in the one day special and today I'm going to create a card for you. This is the card that I'm going to create. If I bring that up a little bit closer and you can tell my camera work is not quite as good as the Hachanda uh, camera people. Not quite up to scratch, but there we go. We're doing the best we can under the circumstances. So, and I, as you can tell, I'm waffling as usual, like I do on my Facebook Lives. I always say I'm not going to waffle, but I can't help myself. So we've got a card here that I've created with alcohol inks. I just wanted to use the alcohol inks in a little bit of a different way. I have done this on a Facebook Live, but I just thought that the Hachanda audience might want to see it, especially those ladies and gentlemen that perhaps don't know my style. So that's what we're going to create for our first sample. So we have our card and we've got a piece of card four inches in width by nine inches in length. And what I'm going to begin with is my, I'm going to stamp my image with a Versamark ink pad and you still, even though you're using a Versamark ink pad, you still need to make sure that you give that stamp a really good inking. I've added my stamp to an All and Create acrylic block. So you just need to make sure that as with any inking, you apply a good layer, a good even layer of ink. This way you get a good stamped image, especially if you've got a quality stamp and a good acrylic block. So I've given that a good inking. And what we're going to do is place that down on our card. And as I always say, and I often repeat myself, allow that ink to rest on the card. Allow it to sink in to the card stock. And I've got these lovely All and Create acrylic blocks, which allow me, because they've got flexibility, they allow me to lift that acrylic block, which allows me to get this central area here, which is the area that we often miss. And sometimes if you're a newbie to stamping, you can get a little bit frustrated if you miss that central area every time. Well, with these acrylic blocks, that alleviates that problem. And what we've got here, which you won't see on camera because it's in a clear sticky ink, which is just perfect for a demo. You can rely on me to demo in white, on white card, just to make it as hard as possible to see on camera. But trust me, it's there. Now, if, like me, you're on camera and you've got sweaty little hands, then what you can do is you can apply an anti-static bag over the surface, over your substrate, which means just the surface that you're working on. You can apply the anti-static bag to prevent that embossing powder going in any areas that it shouldn't. So we need to give that embossing powder a heat. So heat your heat tool. And as you can see, I've already got grubby hands before we even start. So make sure your heat tool is nice and hot and then heat your flower. 
Now you need to make sure that once that embossing powder starts to go, which you might not see on camera, which I'm sure you won't because we haven't got those wonderful camera people at Achandi, you won't see that on camera but it is melting. What you need to make sure is that once that embossing powder starts to melt, that you move your heat tool down the card. You don't keep it on the same area. If you keep it on the same area, you'll over melt that embossing powder and it'll become flat again. It'll no longer be raised. So I'm just moving my card around just to make sure that I get all that embossing. And because it's so bright in here, I can hardly see where I'm embossing to be honest. So I'm just going to take a look at that. I don't know whether you'll see that on camera, but there is a glossy tint to that. You might not be able to see it. Well, you probably can't see it. Let's, let's tell the truth, you probably can't see it. But I knew I'd go and demo something that was difficult to photograph, but there you go. So bring in a piece of white card, and what we're using is alcohol inks, and I'm using Limeade, Purple Twilight, and Aquamarine. Now, alcohol inks are often used on glossy surfaces, whoops, like Yupo paper. Yupo paper, glossy surfaces. I'm actually using it on a white card. You can also use it on watercolour card as well, but I'm using it on a white card to give a totally different look. So I'm applying these purple inks, this the purple ink as well, just pouring it all over my hand like you do. Just tilt the card slightly and then I'm going to go over the white embossing. And can you see that white embossing resists the alcohol ink? But because we're using a card that's absorbent, we need to add more alcohol ink. And if you're using alcohol inks, please ensure that you work in a ventilated area. So open your windows. Just make sure that you're well ventilated. I mean, I'm not using much alcohol ink anyway, but it is advisable that you work in a ventilated area. Just turn that round so I can see where I'm working, like so. So bring that back into shot. We'll just put the lids on our alcohol inks just to make sure, like so. Do you like I'm taking you through every step, including when I put the lids on me, put on my containers? Can't help myself. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take the ink blending solution. And because this area is embossed, because it's embossed, this alcohol ink blending solution will remove the colour from the embossed areas. And I'm hoping that my camera picks that up nicely. It picks up the colour from the embossed areas, add a little bit more of the blending solution and it removes the colour from the embossed areas, which I absolutely love. And it gives an alternative look to alcohol inks. They haven't got that glossy, quite garish look. It looks completely different. And if I bring that up to camera, hopefully you can see that it's a totally different look to that. I just love that really love the totally different look and what I also like about this technique not only does it show the stamp off beautifully shows all that fantastic detail but now because I haven't got a glossy surface I can now add colour back in so I can add colour to these areas and this is my favourite bit adding the colour back in to the stamped areas which I just love I love this bit it's just wonderful how you can add the colour back in. And if I bring in some of that purple just to the petal areas, I will lift this up so you can see, just to try and show you the detail. But adding the colour back in, it's like your eyes drawn right into the card. It really draws you in. I'll lift this card up in just a few moments, just so you can see how that colour really does work. Just colour these few leaves in. If I was not on camera, I would be taking a little bit more time to colour these images in. But that's not what you want to see. You, you want to see the techniques. I hope you're like me. Look, I've been crafting for about two minutes. And I, look at the state of my hands already. Can't help myself. What do they say? It's a true crafter if you've got messy hands. So I'm just turning my card because it just makes it easier for me to colour. Now, I'm not a professional colourist. There are a lot of people out there that colour professionally. I'm just doing this to add a bit of colour 
to my design and I'm using polychromo pencils but can you see how that just adds another element to the design I just it's like it's almost like glass like like you're looking through it it's it's a lovely effect lovely effect so what we can do now as we can use our stencil as you can see mine is well loved so it's not in its packaging but it's well loved so we're going to use the stencil which is also in the show and I'm going to move some of my product out of the way so we can actually do something and we're going to use white paint we'll just move this along a bit so you can see me apply the white paint to the stencil so I'm going to apply the white paint any white paint any white acrylic is absolutely fine and I'm using my brayer and I brayer out the paint evenly and then I apply to my stencil. I do it that way just so I don't get big blobs of paint. I'm going to spritz that with water, bring in my card and then just place the stencil down onto the card and bring in my grubby piece of kitchen roll because we can't waste our kitchen roll. If you wanted, you could, once you've added loads of colour to your kitchen roll, you could machine stitch that to one of your journals. So just allow that ink to sit and you get a beautiful background element there. We'll just add a little touch here. So we're going to repeat that process. And I love how this stencil hasn't got, you know, straight edges. So it means that I get more of a random design, which is what I like. I don't like it if we get those straight edges. It's not a problem because you can just wipe those straight edges if you've got a stencil with straight edges, stencil mask, whichever you call them. So what I'm going to do is add some more of that white paint to this area of my card. Again, allowing that paint to absorb into the card. And it works beautifully because my alcohol inks are now flat, they're not glossy. So I like to add things in threes I'm, a, I'm a, just one of those people that likes to add threes or fives, odd numbers. I think it's just more appealing to the eye. And you know, I've decided I can waffle for England, even when I'm talking to myself in the craft room. So you get the luxury of listening to me. So now I'm just thinking where to add this. I'm probably going to add this here. Just a little touch here. Move that up so we're in camera. And just allow that to rest that's it so I'm just going to move my brayer out the way and I'm just going to clean up this little bit of paint just so that we don't get in too much of a mess well you've only got to look at my hands and you can see that I'm in a complete mess so just take a piece of kitchen roll and just wipe that up okay and what we'll do is we'll just give a little waft now you can't hit it too much because you've got this embossing I'm just drying this a little bit you can't heat because you've already got that embossing on there so you can't heat too much now what I want to do is add a spotlight in a different way I want to add a spotlight with pieces of card so I've got these thin strips of card here and I want to add a spotlight in a different way so what I'm going to do is I'm using these pieces of card to highlight that central flower, like so. So I'm just going to fold it over rather than tear it. Just going to fold that over. Take another piece, a strip of card. So just some thin strips of card, maybe those pieces of card that you thought of chucking in the bin. Well, now you can create a spotlight. So I'm just going to you see, and I can move this if I want. If I want to move it along a bit, that allows me to do that because I've not stapled that into place. So we've now got... See, when you're live on camera, you end up faffing more. That's better. So I've now got those. So that's my spotlight. So I'm creating like a little frame. And I'm going to create these framed pieces across here. And this is a different way. Often you will see me add spotlights in circles. But today I thought, let's do something a little bit different. So just take that off and staple these into place. So just move that so that we can staple into place. Grab my stapler and staple that in there. And all this is doing is framing that central image. Like so. 
and I can still move these so that they're nice and straight and then add so it adds like a quirky frame element to your design which I quite like it sort of gives it a quirky touch sorry about moving the card at a different angle it's just easier for me to staple that way so just add another staple there so this gives us our spotlight and that white from the spotlight and the white from the stenciling and the white from the embossing all makes it a cohesive design it all draws the eye in and this draws the eye into that focal central piece there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a little piece of chicken wire can you see here I've just got this chicken wire from the garden which I've just flirted all the way across my craft room that's what happens when you get a professional demo when you see so we just cut a little bit of this chicken wire like so and you see if we're honest with the viewers the viewers I did have this chicken wire all prepped but I had to record the video for a second time because my phone decided to just stop and I carried on waffling with the phone stopping so I just thought I'd let you into a few of my little secrets here of what goes on in the professional household of Tracy Evans. She has to record the video half a dozen times. That's what happens. So then what we've got, we're chucking everything on the floor at the same time. Then what we need is we need a scrap, a scrap of white card and we're going to stamp our sentiment. So if we look at that stamp set again, that stamp set has got some sentiments on here. It's got hugs and kisses and it's got best wishes today, tomorrow and always. I love that sentiment. And that's the sentiment we're going to use. So again, I'm going to use my Versafine Claire to stamp my, folk, my sentiment. And as with anything that I stamp, I still allow that ink to sit on the card whether it's on a wet surface, dry surface, I still allow it to sit just for a few moments so that that ink absorbs into the card. And that is a beautiful sentiment. So what we need to do is because this is an ink with a good open time, we need to make sure that we blot that ink. Just give it a blot. If you don't want to blot, just give it a dry with your heat tool just so that you don't smudge that sentiment. And I'm going to cut that sentiment out. Now, if I wasn't on camera, I would use a guillotine just to cut the sentiment straight, just because that looks more professional. But we're live on camera, so let's go with the flow. Just cut that a little bit more, like so. And it often helps if your hands aren't shaking when you're doing a live video. That's usually good as well. So we're going to split that up. Just think this is a lovely sentiment. Like so. And again, we're keeping this white, mainly because those pops of white really lift the design. We just adhere those to our background, like so. And again, Maybe if you put the right sentiment in the right place, so it's best wishes is the piece that we need to adhere here. Best wishes today, and then this piece. Just apply that today, tomorrow, and always. Move our adhesive out the way, like so. And I do love how those white sentiments pop. Now, if you put something, give it some dimension, like to our flower, so we give that flower some dimension. I've create, I've cut the flower out. You don't want to watch me cut out. So I've cut that flower. Make it off centre so that you can see some of the white underneath. And if you place that on a back, on a black backdrop, can't get my words out, on a black backdrop, it makes it pop. Now if we bring in the original card, this is the original card. Can you see that with those depth of colours, it, it draws the eye in? And I've added two metal embellishments. That metal embellishment echoes the metal of the chicken wire. It all works together to create a cohesive design. So the purple 
that you've echoed here is echoed in the background, but you would never guess that those were alcohol inks. And the only thing that this is missing, this card, is a few famous Tracy splatters. So we have to add a few of those splatters to the background and then add it to your black mat. And when you add it to your black mat, it pops like so. I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. So I hope you enjoyed our first demo and I'll be back shortly. Bye for now.